the conjugates he saw and analyzing Ka and Kb for acid or base relative strength. Okay, so let's remind ourselves of conjugate acid-base pairs. Last time we talked about acetic acid and its conjugate base acetate. So here's acetic acid and here's the losable proton. Okay, so that's the one that's donated to water to produce hydronium, leaving us with the conjugate base, which is acetate, so basically without that H+. Now, we also found that if we multiplied Ka and Kb together, we're going to get Kw. And that's for conjugate acid-base pairs. They have to be conjugate acid-base pairs for that to work. Multiply Ka and Kb and we're going to get Kw. Now, let's talk about analyzing the magnitude of a Ka value and use it to get an idea of whether a weak acid is relatively strong or relatively weak compared to others. And so we can do this basically by comparing the magnitude of the Ka value. So if it's relatively large, the weak acid is relatively strong. Relatively large Ka value means a relatively strong weak acid. And if an acid has a larger Ka value, it means that a larger percent dissociation has occurred. So there are more products. There's more hydronium. That's what makes it a relatively stronger weak acid. Now, let's look at hydrofluoric acid and acetic acid. Which of the two of these is the stronger weak acid. Okay, so if you said hydrofluoric acid, because this Ka value is larger, 10 to the negative 4 instead of 10 to the negative 5, then that means that a larger percent has dissociated for hydrofluoric acid than for acetic acid. And so that means that hydrofluoric acid is a stronger weak acid. Still a weak acid, it's still not a strong acid, but it's stronger than acetic acid. Now, what about pKa? So let's go ahead and calculate pKa for each of these acids. So if we do that for hydrofluoric acid, we're going to get 3.46. If we calculate the pKa for acetic acid, we're going to get 4.75. Now, we already know that hydrofluoric acid is the relatively stronger weak acid and it has a lower pKa. And a lower pKa value does mean that the weak acid is stronger relative to others. And that brings us to our central concept, which is the conjugate seesaw. Essentially, the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. So now we're talking about conjugate acid-base pairs. So the stronger the acid is, the higher the Ka value, the lower the Kb value is going to be, or the weaker the conjugate base. You can do the same thing with bases. So the stronger the weak base, the higher the Kb value, the lower the Ka value is going to be, and that means the conjugate acid is weaker. So the stronger the base, the weaker the conjugate acid, the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. That is the conjugate seesaw. As one goes up, the other one has to go down. Okay, so let's look at hydrofluoric acid again. So Ka is 3.5 times 10 to the negative 4. So what is the conjugate base? And calculate Kb for this conjugate base and explain what the value tells you. So the conjugate base for hydrofluoric acid is fluoride anion. And if we calculate the Kb for that, so we take Kw and we plug in Ka, we're going to get 2.9 times 10 to the negative 11. And that is much smaller than the Ka value, right? So that means that that fluoride anion is a very wimpy base. Now, what about ammonium? So remember, ammonium is the conjugate acid for ammonia. But let's say that we isolate some ammonium or we put it in solution in the form of a salt, and the Ka 
for ammonium is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. Now, what is the conjugate base for ammonium? And let's calculate the Kb for this conjugate base. And we're going to talk about what that value tells us. We already know that the Ka for ammonium is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 10. And the conjugate base, ammonia, has a Kb value that is equal to the Kw divided by this Ka value. And we're going to get 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. OK, so compare those two values. So we can see that Kb is much larger than Ka. 10 to the negative 5 versus 10 to the negative 10. And so that means that ammonium is a much weaker acid than ammonia is a base. Said another way, ammonia is a much stronger base than ammonium is an acid. The base form dominates. The ammonium is a very wimpy acid. Now, let's take it to extremes. So remind ourselves that strong acids dissociate completely in water. And now we're going to see that this is basically as strong an acid as you can get in water. So hydrochloric acid is one of those. Dissociates completely. Now in the extreme, this is as strong an acid as you can get. This is as weak a base as you can get. So in water, chloride anion does not act as a base. And that's probably a good thing to think about when you're adding sodium chloride to your water when you cook your food. So chloride anion is not changing the pH of the water. So the conjugate base of a strong acid is not basic in water. It does not change the pH. The pH will still be 7. Now, what about strong bases? Same thing. So a strong base is as strong a base as you can have in water. And so the conjugate acid is as weak. So the conjugate acid, which is sodium plus, so sodium cation, that's the conjugate acid of a strong base, and it does not affect the pH of water at all. That conjugate acid is not acidic in water. So that's why when you add sodium chloride to your cooking water, it doesn't change the pH. It's still the pH of pure water. Neither one of those two ions changes the pH of the water. It doesn't react with the water. Let's summarize this a little bit in a little bit different way. If the Ka for the weak acid is relatively large, then the Kb for the conjugate base is going to be pretty small. If the weak acid is relatively strong, then its conjugate base is going to be very weak. So that's the conjugate seesaw said in a little bit different way for acids. For bases, the same principle applies. If the Kb for the weak base is relatively large, the Ka for the conjugate acid is going to be relatively small. And if the weak base is relatively strong, the conjugate acid is going to be very weak. Okay, so larger Kb means smaller Ka. And if the weak base is relatively strong, the conjugate acid is going to be quite wimpy. Okay, so next we're going to talk about salts that hydrolyze in water and affect pH.